miss this place. Ah, look at all this stuff here. Yes, Andy is back. Did you miss me? Ah, well, that's the first video in four days, at least on this channel here. I did some other videos on the other three channels. It's, it's so addicting, you know, I, I cannot stop making videos. Yeah, and people said I should take a little break from making videos here from the off cut garage. So I did, had a little nap, a snooze. <laughs> but now I'm back, rejuvenated, fresh start. And today some boxes have arrived here. I had a look on this one already. Whoa, there are all of our cables in here. This is our 70 mil. Look at this. It's a good size, right? And then we've got 35 mil for all our inverters. Wow, that is heavy. That is heavy. Yep, yeah, 35 and 70 mil. Double or half. And some um, 16 millimeter for the solar charge controllers. Yeah, and this is what I paid for the cable. So this is 16 millimeters, six gauge solar car battery welding cable, uh, $6.10. The 35 millimeter is two gauge, $12 per meter. And the 70 millimeter is zero gauge. Weird, why would you use gauge at $20.50 per meter. All in total $308 for cabling. Holy crap. But this is super high flexible cable. Even the 70 millimeter cable here is very very flexible. And this is exactly what I need here. You need to have a sharp turn here from here going back to the bus bars. This stuff is perfect. We have used exactly this cabling here for our battery here in our previous installation. It's really, really good. I, um, I link this down below in the description as well as on my website. Uh, if you are from Australia, this is the cheapest you can get. And it's super high quality. It's double insulated, double insulated, welding, high flexible, pure copper. Yeah, cable. It's good shit. Well, this one is from Blue Bar Industries in Kabulcha. I know what that is. Okay, nice proper cable lux. 70 by 10, 70 by 8, 16 by 8, and 35 by 8. Well, you guys told me 8 millimeters is okay, right? I shouldn't need 10, so I ordered everything in 8 millimeters now. Ah, I know what that is. I've got one here already. And I ordered a second one. Well, if you don't know, these are the electronic switches where you can link your app to, and then you can turn off and turn on these switches. And you can also see um, see things like like the consumed energy, what you have to pay, and it gives you also a graph of your energy consumption per day and per month. And you can program timers and turn them on and off, and loops and all this kind of stuff. They are really handy. And these ones here are the PO R2. These are the 15 amp versions. Oh, nice. Oh, look at these rockets. These ferrules. They are for 35, two gauge, 35 millimeter black insulated ferrules. <laughs> Holy smokes, they are huge. A pencil fits easily into these ferrules. <laughs> this concludes today's unboxing. Well, and a quick update on our shelf situation here. This is all fixed now with a flat galvanized bar, 50 by five. I put this under the legs here, up until here, and this is all fixed now and super stable. By the way, the wheels can carry 125 kilos each, which I certainly have not on this shelf here. I have no intention to put wheels under this battery shelf here. This would be a fixed installation, 
next to the wall there. Because we will have so many cables coming back on the on the back side of this shelf here, there's there's no point of wheeling it around or something and, and this this wouldn't work anyway. A few people have suggested I could actually have a plate here underneath across here as well and have then another shelf situation down here at the bottom, very small one, but it's another shelf. And to be honest, I really like this idea. That's another 10, it's another 100 millimeters. Yeah, 100 millimeters of shelf. Well, that would be all right for all the conduit and stuff, you know, or, or all my heat shrink stuff and these little boxes here. Hey, and talking about conduit, I've ordered a, come on, ordered a 40 millimeter conduit now here. And this can now easily fit two cables. Potentially can even fit three. Oh yeah, easily. Two are easy now. All right, but um, the purpose of tonight's video is actually to explain something completely different than this stuff here. So let me clear the situation here. It is always a shame to wipe out these nice drawings. Ah, oh, this whiteboard has seen better days, really. Okay, I think this is roughly how it looks. All right, um, so this is the, here, this is the situation we have at the moment. There, there, okay. That's good. Okay, so this is the situation we have. We've got our grid here and three phase power is coming in into the property, into the meter box outside of the garage. So, and here comes the big shit now. When they built the house, they supplied the house only with two phases. Only two actives going into the house. I only have L2 and L3 inside the house to supply my load. I mean, why would you do that? If you have three phase here, why would you not put three phase to the house, right? <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, it's, um, it's too late now. There's only two phases to the house. And we've got our solar system here on top of the house which is connected to an inverter and this is connected to L3. So how this now works is this inverter produces AC and supplies this AC to the house. Whatever we don't use inside the house gets exported as excess energy to the meter box and to the grid. For every kilowatt hour I'm pushing back into the grid, I'm getting 44 cents from the government plus 10.2 cents from my energy provider. So all in total 54.2 cents for every kilowatt hour I'm producing and pushing back into the grid. And of course the meter is offsetting all the energy I'm using on L2 or L3. So because I'm pushing the energy only in on L3, even I'm using power on L2 inside the house, the meter will take this into account and even I'm probably exporting energy on L3 into the grid but I'm, I'm taking energy from the grid back on L2 for all the other supplies inside the house. So if I'm pushing 500 watts on L3 into the grid and I'm using 500 watts here on L2 I'm not getting any money at all because the meter offsets this energy between the two phases. So during the day we are trying to use as less energy as possible inside the house to maximize the feed-in energy to the grid. Makes sense, right? Okay, and now the off-grid garage comes into play. Has got his own solar system and a battery connected and an inverter which supplies power to the load inside the garage. It is not connected to anything outside of the garage anymore. So, and now people have suggested to install a hybrid inverter. Well, let me tell you, a hybrid inverter will not work. 
A hybrid inverter would connect to my off-grid system, to my battery, to my solar here, to the grid and to the house. And then makes the decision, well, if we have enough juice inside the battery, we use the battery inverted to 230 volts and then push it back to supply power to the house, right? If the battery is empty, it switches over and takes power from the grid and supplies the house and also recharges the battery if you want to. So, why does it not work? Because of this solar system here, which is AC connected as well. If we have enough juice in the battery and the hybrid inverter would say, okay, we're taking this energy and supplying power to the house. At the same time, this energy here from the solar system wants to go outside because we are not using that much. So there's the conflict. Where is this power going, right? A hybrid inverter cannot deal with an external power source on the load side. It can deal with this situation, with this solar here, and then makes a decision to use the battery or the grid to supply the load. But if there is power coming from the load side, it cannot deal with that. I know there is Victron gear which can do that, but... Um, and also I would need a separate Victron meter in here again and install the hybrid inverter and this is all a lot of configuration and changes in my cabling and I don't think I can keep my 54 cent tariff then. As soon as I make any changes to this setup here I will lose these 44 cents and because I have this contract here with the 44 cents government feed-in tariff and we've got an AC system connected at the load side and we also have a DC system connected over here that makes it almost impossible to manage. Okay, what I want to show you now is this is a website which contains information uh, basically it is split in two parts. The first part shows you how to maintain your eligibility to maintain eligibility for the 44 cents feed-in tariff, you need to. So we must be under 100 megawatt hours. Maintain an electricity account, so you need to be connected. You have a network connection agreement with your distributor. Remain the electricity account holder. Ensure the name on your account doesn't change. And if you replace your inverter with the same one or a smaller one. And then further down here is the second part of this website. It says you will lose eligibility for the 40 cents feed in tariff if you move house, sell your house, increase your inverter capacity, close your electricity account, are disconnected for whatever reason, add extra capacity, for example panels, which exceed the rated capacity of your system's inverter. Use alternative energy sources or transfer your... Oh, it starts raining. We never have rain in winter. Or transfer your electricity account into another name, add any other name to your electricity account, replace your inverter with a larger one. So, and then I want to highlight these paragraphs, which can be found in each of these two parts of this website. Okay, let's start at the top again. So here we maintain eligibility for the 44 cent feed-in tariff. Here, last paragraph. Only use alternative sources of energy for example generator or batteries, when the system receiving the 44 cents feed-in tariff, that is our solar system here, which receives the 44 cents when it operates, is not operating, for example at night or during blackouts. So that means I can only connect the battery and supply power to the house if this system is not working during the night, for example, when it's dark. Or if I turn this one off, I can supply power to the house. Okay, let's go down to this other section again. We will lose the 44 cents if we use alternative energy sources, for example, a generator or a battery, when the system receiving the 44 cents feed-in tariff is operating. So as long as my solar system operates during the day, I'm not allowed to connect this battery or this solar system or a generator to this line and supply power to the house.
because this would mean I'm using less power for my load inside the house and the solar system on top of the house would feed in more energy to the grid and therefore they have to pay me more money. Yeah, that makes totally sense. And people have done this at the beginning. They bought generators and let them run during the day and connected all their load inside their house to the generator and let the solar system generate as much energy as possible and sold this for 44 cents to the government. And they made, they made more money with exporting energy from their solar system than it cost them in fuel. So there, there was a reason for them to doing that. But now they have introduced these two paragraphs. And it's simply not allowed anymore to do that. So as you can see, it is not as simple to supply power from the off-grid garage to the house now. And keep the 54 cents or the 44 cents feed-in tariff. So the only thing I can really do is install another inverter which feeds from my battery and this connects back to one of the active cables to the house. And as soon as the sun goes down and the solar system doesn't produce any energy anymore, I can start this inverter up and supply power from my battery to the house. Because at this point of time, my own solar won't work either anymore. So I have to charge the batteries during the day and then use the power with an inverter in the night and feed it back to my house. And I potentially need a second inverter, also connected to the battery, which goes to my second active to the house, if I want to supply all the power to the house during the night. Yeah, guys, this is basically the situation we have at the moment here. So I cannot really do anything until, what does it say on the website here? The 1st of July 2028. This is my end date of this contract. I mean, I can cancel this contract at any time, of course, but I will lose the 44 cents per kilowatt hour. And this does not make sense. This is about one and a half, two grand a year. And this is a lot of money, you know, and I don't want to let this go. And I'm thinking about this problem for a long time. Since I installed here the battery in the off-grid garage, I thought, well, how can I do this? How can I supply power to the house without losing this contract? Oh, and we have more parcels here. This should be my single port GPO. Yep, there it is. And here, another one. Mini RCDBO RCBO. Really? Okay, these are RCDs or how do you call them in the US? I've forgotten. RF, FPI, whatever. These are, these are basically safety switches. And I've got two of them, 10 amps, because I think we need two, one each for these inverters. Yeah, this is basically the problem. Until June 20, July 2028, I cannot do very much with supplying power to the house. Yeah, guys, I know this is a total shit show with this contract and the restrictions I have with it. But you know, on the other hand, it is also interesting to see if we can find a solution for that. And this is basically the situation we have, which we cannot change. We cannot do anything about it is what it is. It's the same with the shading here on the garage. This is the base situation we find and we have to deal with it and find the best solution possible. Okay guys, I think, well, you, now you know what's going on. I'm keen to read your comments about it and see what you come up with. Maybe someone has got a good idea, which I didn't think about. So until then, guys, stay charged and safe. And we shall see us again in the next video coming out tomorrow again with a battery test. It's a weird and disappointing battery test. Thanks for watching again. See you then. Bye bye. <music>